up, Trinity kicking, and between the uprights, followers, we have an unbelievable show today. It's going to be a little bit different, obviously. Um, this isn't my usual kind of laid back kicking gear, uh, but today we're talking about probably the most important things we've ever talked about on Trinity kicking, and that's really how to analyze your kicking and the importance of being able to analyze your kicking quantifying what it is that we actually are doing as kickers. So we're gonna get really kind of, I don't know, lame or nerdy, and we're gonna break down what kicking really is um, and how we can maximize our efforts. Um, so we'll definitely get rolling on that. Um, Casey, unfortunately, is out, and you can see what happens when she goes out, all the crazy things that end up happening around this place um, anytime we do a filming without her. So. Um, be sure to send in your questions. We'll be sure to get to those at some point. Um, but as of right now, I'm running solo with kind of my, uh, I don't know what to call them, my, my film crew that's a little out of the ordinary. Maybe we'll, they'll end up flipping the cameras on themselves or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and start kind of getting down um, the basics and breaking down kicking. So you're going to excuse me, my back is going to be um, to you guys a lot of the times. And this, of course, we've had this up for a long time. This is just some of the episodes that we just recently filmed on Between the Upright, so be sure to go on our YouTube and take those out. Man, this tassel's killing me. You know, um, I had to actually go and borrow a tassel because I never graduated. That's a lot I did graduate. Stay in school, kids, um, or you'll end up starting your own keeping camp. I'm just kidding. I did graduate, I promise. So, now that my board is all clean, the first thing we're going to talk about, which is what all of you guys... Um, ask me every single kicker and punter asks me the same question even though it makes zero sense we talk about accuracy all the time and how vital accuracy is and how it's the most important thing in our kicking and even our punting even though we don't quite talk about punting enough um, but what it turns out is that all you guys do is ask me coach how do I get more power in my kicks or how do I get more power in my punts and uh, Real quick, if anybody can go to Google and Google and tell me what tassels uh, or what side the tassel is supposed to be on, that would be greatly appreciated. So, let's talk about power. Another way you can say the word power is force. How do I get more force into my kick? So, we'll write a big F for you, an F for you, um, and we'll talk about, that almost came off really bad. So, we're going to talk about force, right? So, let's go ahead write down force right here all right force equals so this is how we get more force um and kind of the most thing that you guys tend to think about or y'all's first go to or, or our natural athletic instinct takes us to our leg speed or acceleration okay but we get our power or our force from another measurable force as well and that is our mass and you have heard us talking about adding more mass into your kick most of you guys are way too caught up on acceleration and you're gonna have to excuse me because I'm not sure how to spell acceleration but that's pretty close I feel like it's a birthday card right you always misspell stuff and you always run out of room so you gotta kind of tail it off so this is what you guys are stuck on, is that acceleration, all right, which is our leg speed, all right, but when we're talking about how fast we can get our leg to the ball, we can only improve it so much. You're talking about tens, thousands, whatever comes after thousands, tens of thousands of a second that you can help increase your leg speed, but that doesn't really translate that much into force, right? The difference between, let me use another marker to make this a little bit easier to see, the difference between somebody who can get their legs to the ball in point one zero zero compared to somebody who can get it in point, I don't know, one zero two is very, very similar. It's not that big of a change in the number. So we can only change acceleration so much. So how do we get more power as a kicker, right? That's where our strength comes in. That's where our technique comes in. That's where the techniques that Trinity Kicking teaches really plays a factor. We teach you how to maximize your mass when you kick into the ball. Whether you're kicking or punting, we talk about this all the time, and I want you guys to really see this in your own film. And I promise you, most of you guys, about 85, 90% of you are gonna see the same thing. 
When we go to make contact with that ball, what happens is our leg is bent, right? We have a bent knee at contact. And so what it leads to is we're not using our big muscles. If you're standing or sitting wherever you are right now, bend your knee slightly. And I ask you to flex out your quad, flex out your hamstring. You can't do it. It's impossible. Your body doesn't allow it. So all that kind of flabbiness is lost mass. Those are some of the biggest muscle groups that we have in our body. And it's the most, some of the most important that we use when we kick. So if we're not using that mass, we're losing it. So instead of whatever mass that our legs have, we're diminishing it and then timing that in the acceleration. And that's what our force is into the ball. Now, if we do lock out our knee, all of a sudden you can lock out that quad, lock out that hamstring. And when we point our ankle and lock out our ankle, we can flex that calf. And that's where you add more mass into your kicking, leading to more power. What does power get you? Well, it doesn't get you to a basically a uh, better accuracy, although compression leads to that. But what it does is it gets you that hang time that you need. It gets you that distance that you need. It gets you that pop and that lift on the ball that we're all so desperate, look, desperately looking for. All right? So you want to know how to get more power in your kick? You got to follow the Trinity technique. It's not easy. It's not natural. But you have to learn to lock out that leg. All right? So let me get my uh, makeshift thing here. Again, so you guys at home, force, which is another way of saying power, equals mass times acceleration, which is another word for speed. For whatever reason, they don't use speed in physics, so it's acceleration. So forget all this jargon. It's just power equals mass, which is our big old leg, times leg speed. All right? Leg speed, leg mass, power into the ball. Physics. Okay. Let's see what we got here. So I hope that you have already learned something, but we're not nearly done because that's only half of the proof that we have for you guys. And so when I talk about the proof that we have for you guys here at Trinity Kicking, in every video that I've talked to you guys on Between the Uprights, or if you've ever been to a session, we always talk about how we're the most scientific or scientifically proven techniques that we use. And that's part of it, right? That is our technique of taking a wide plant so that we can lock out our legs so that we can use that mass into the ball. That's where we get more power. That's why Trinity Technique gives you more power. Okay, now we're going to talk about how we can get you more accurate. All right, so let me grab my next color marker here. Make sure you guys are sending in questions, by the way. Okay, so let's talk about a kicker. Uh, we're just going to draw a kicker right here. Here's a leg. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in. Well, let me get a pointer. So I'm going to zoom in right here to his leg. So I'm going to draw his leg a little bit out of proportion and a little bit longer, but this is your leg as a kicker, all right? Same thing if you're a punter, okay? So this right here, this little area, we're gonna boom. Okay, here, well, here's our football. You know, I'd like to see you guys draw this. I know you guys are talking trash about me right now. All right, so here is your leg making contact with that football in this little sweet spot right here. Obviously, you don't wanna get laces by your holder, Take it up with him, don't take it up with me. Physics. Okay. Right now, our leg, when we're making contact, whoop. Let me draw these laces real quick on your shoe. Okay. So at contact, right now, your knee is bent. This is what we talk about, not using that all of our mass into our legs. So you're losing your quad right here, you're losing your hamstring right there. And, we're, and we kind of got this floppy looking leg. When we make contact with a bent knee, right, you are gonna see that your leg starts to move a little bit. You end up losing power, but you're also absorbing power because you're not delivering that force. That force has to go somewhere, it goes back into your leg. The same thing happens with our ankle. If our ankle is not locked out, if you ever make contact with your ankle kind of popped up looking like an L shape, 
you are going to see in slow motion from a front angle that foot wave. We call it that waving action where you can literally see the power that you're trying to give to this. Let me get my pointer again. When we try and get the power from the ankle or from our leg into the ball, you're going to see that waving action, which shows that the force that you're trying to put into the ball is actually getting some of it, getting released back into your foot because it's not locked out and stiff. And now that has that waving action, which is showing that rippling effect that you'll see. So you're going to want to lock out that knee, lock out that ankle. Here's the other thing. Let me put this down here. Let me grab another marker real quick. When we talk about measuring, right? So you have this measurement here, which let's just say is about one foot, all right? Then you have this measurement right here, which is your calf or your shin, and let's just call that, I don't know, one foot. And then you have your ankle, which is another measurement. You are trying in your brain, while you're taking your approach, trying to figure out how far your plant should be. We get this question a lot. Where should my plant be? You're going to hear us at Trinity talk about how you need to take a much wider plant spot than you've ever taken, what you're used to taking, than what your brain is telling you you need to take. Because in soccer, not football, we do hit with a bent knee and a bent ankle because we're always adjusting. We're kicking on the run right? It's a fluid game in soccer, so we never can take the time to plant our leg and make sure that we're getting the perfect strike on the ball. The only people that really do that are goalies, and if you ever watch a goalie take a goal kick, a really solid, like, professional goalie, you're going to see that their leg is fully locked out at contact. That's how they kick a soccer ball completely across the field. So, you're trying to measure, okay, my plant foot needs to be, here's a foot, here's a foot, here's six inches, I don't know, let me guesstimate. And so what happens is you bend that knee accordingly when you're wrong, your foot adjusts to that ball. And so what happens, we end up losing power, okay? So as I erase this, let's talk about how we get accurate. So on all those measurements, I know that's a little bit complicated if you weren't able to follow it. Check this out. Here's our quad, okay? It's one foot. If our knee is locked out, here's our shin. If our ankle is locked out, here's our ankle, right? So now we have this measurement. Our plant foot goes here. So here's a shoe, right? Well, I guess, there we go. Here's a shoe. Get that away. And here is our ball. I don't know if you guys can see that very clear, but Basically, this is extremely easy to measure at that point. It takes a couple times to get used to planting your plant spot the same every time. But once you figure out where your plant foot should be, and once we figure out how to get it there and put it in our muscle memory so that it's there every single time, our leg is not going to change. There is no bend. It's going to be consistent every single time unless we hit a growth spurt. Like some of you guys in middle school or some of you guys in young high school classes, right? You're still going to grow, but you'll be able to adjust inch and inch and centimeter and centimeter wider. But this will not change once we get to a certain point. This is how we get accurate, okay? So one, we get the added benefit of adding all of the mass from our quads, our hamstrings, our calf muscles, our ankle being locked out, everything pointed, so that one, we got more mass, but two, it's consistent. It's going to be the same length every single time. All right, now, if you start crunching over, that leg will get longer. If you make sure that you lean the same way with your body every single time, it will stay at the same distance every single time. So we have to make sure our body lean, which is what we talk about, having a wide body lean to away from our ball and having that leg locked out, is one, we're gonna get more power, and two, we're gonna get more leg speed, more distance. So 
accuracy, distance, all of those things. Let me get another pointer. That one's kind of stupid. So once we get all of this straight, we are going to not only be powerful, but we will be consistent. And that's exactly what we want as a kicker. That's exactly what we want as a punter. So now that we've talked about putting more mass and how that can, how that can help us, and also making ourselves consistent with making sure that our length of our leg or our pendulum is the same every single time, now we can talk about another force that we need. So another force that is kind of more for... I guess kickers than punters, but it does show to punters as well. So I know this guy's might be a little boring. I know school hasn't quite started yet for you guys. And yet here I am teaching physics, but this is the science of kicking. You need to know that. So again, if you go to a camp where they tell you to snap your knee or bend your knee or practice snapping your knee, it's not scientific, right? It doesn't make sense. It's taking away power and accuracy and consistency from us. Physics. So make sure we're working on that. So the last little bit I'm gonna teach you is something we like to call torque. Boom, how do we get a little bit more oomph onto our ball? I hope that's how you spell torque at least. I'm a, I'm a physicist apparently. I'm not much of an English major. So let's talk about torque. What is torque? What's the difference between power and torque? Well, torque is kind of how you measure a force in a rotation or a twisting motion, basically. Where do we torque our bodies when we kick? In our hips. When we are talking about slamming our hips shut, or we talking about kind of leaving our body open and slamming it, making contact with that ball, that is the force of torque that we are talking about. So we talk about how to get more power into our kick, talked about how to be more consistent when we kick. Let's talk about how to bring it to the next level and go from an average or solid high school guy and become a D1 guy. So how do we measure torque? Well, T equals torque. That's torque for you. Let me write that down. Sorry guys, I don't like putting my back to you. Torque equals. So this is going to show us how we get torque. Torque equals a linear force, linear meaning a line, a straight line. That sounds a lot like when I just told you you need to lock out your knee and lock out your ankle, doesn't it? So T equals F, which is a linear force. I hope I spelled linear and force right. Times, boom. That is also a time symbol for a lot of you young guys, middle school guys, young high school guys. A circle basically can mean time, right? You're also going to get distance from your axis, which for whatever reason is represented as R, right? That's basically going to be, I think it stands for radius. I'm not sure, right? So you're going to have your torque equals a linear force times a distance from your, ac from your axis. So let me spell all that. Distance from axis. That point being our hips, right? Our hip flexor times sine, which I don't really know how to do the sine. You're going to have to do all kind of crazy stuff with a graphing calculator. You'll learn that in trigonometry, but that's not really in our control. So don't worry about that. That's more of like a constant type deal. Um, it's not really constant. Don't, don't at me on that. Physics. So let's forget about the sign for now, right? Let's not worry about that. And let's look at torque equaling linear force, which is our leg, times distance from our, ac from our axis, which again is going to be how long our leg is, all right? So this is how fast your leg is and how powerful your leg is. This is going to be the distance and how long your leg is, all right? So T, well, sorry guys, I keep forgetting to give T equals your force and power that your leg is producing times the distance from the axis, which is our hip. So that ball and ball joint in our hip times sine, which again, you're gonna need a graph calculator to figure that out. We're not mathematicians just quite yet. We're just kickers and punters. Physics. So T equals F times R times sin is what we are looking for when we're talking about torque. This is how you get more 
oomph into your kick. So how do we make sure that we maximize our torque when we go to kick, all right? And it's exactly kind of how I just taught you how to be the most consistent kicker. Now we're gonna talk about how to add more power from that same consistency. So let me erase this and we're gonna focus now, this thing is killing me. So we're gonna focus now on this bit right here, the distance from your axis, okay? So again, here's our person. Hopefully you guys can see this. This is our axis, our hip, all right? As our leg comes down, as our leg comes down, all right? The longer that leg, the more distance we have from our axis, the bigger this number gets. The bigger this number gets, when we multiply it to the more force that we get, the better our torque is. So, let's now erase all of this. Here is our football. How do we maximize the distance and our mechanical advantage? You're gonna have to Google that. How are we gonna maximize that? How are we gonna maximize that R in the torque formula? Well, if our knee, here's our contact point, our foot, if our knee is bent from our hip, man, I'm really not too good at this drawing. That's his arm. Here's his other leg. If we have a bend right there at our knee, then it shortens this distance. All right, so let's just say this is about, I don't know, 1.2 feet. All right, well, that'd be a really short guy. Well, some of you guys are that short, probably not. The lollipop yield over here, but let's just use it for, for, for time's sake, all right? With our knee bent, we got 1.2. That means the R in the torque, which is gonna be torque equals F times R times sin, in order to make that R bigger and give us more torque into our kick, which also gives us more power and more consistency. Man, this thing's killing me. We, here's our point, we straighten it. Now that 1.2 when our knee was bent is now a 1.5. We gained inches on that leg, all right? Now our leg isn't changing any, it's not getting any longer, it's simply just using our mechanical advantage, making sure that our leg is as long as possible. So with this scientific approach to kind of break everything back down for you, this scientific approach, when you lock out your leg, it gives you more power because it adds the bigger muscle groups, which gives you more mass, It's, oh, sorry. It's also going to give you more torque because now our leg is longer. Furthermore, it's going to give us more consistency because it's going to be the same every single time so you can knock your kicks out of the park. So, I know that was super boring, super long, complicated way of telling you if you just follow the technique and trust in the technique, and not rely so much on your leg speed thinking that's the end all be all, which is the acceleration that we talked about earlier, then you are gonna be a way more solid, more powerful, more consistent, more hang time, more everything that a kicker, kickoff specialist, punter would want to be. So if you guys have stayed this long, it means you've studied this, don't worry, we're gonna put this up on our YouTube. So if you ever feel like needing something to fall asleep to, we can go over that. So again, this is a fantastic, fantastic uh, kind of lesson on the science behind kicking, why the technique that we teach matters. We spent a lot of time really trying to break down and learn what the best possible kicking, punting, kickoff techniques are. We've absolutely mastered it. The science doesn't lie, you can't cheat math. So when you go to these other kicking camps and you ask them what their science is, they need to have an answer that they can prove to you. Um, that you can go to a physics teacher and say, hey, is this right what they're teaching me? You have to start to learn to break it down and look at it from a scientific perspective. Once you do that, you're gonna be able to analyze what's going on. If you miss a kick wide left or you push a kick wide right, 
or for whatever reason you're you're just not hitting the ball solid, you can go back to the equations and what you can do is you can say, man, my power wasn't there today. Was it my mass? Maybe my knee was bent. Maybe I'm super tired. We had morning workouts. Maybe my leg speed or acceleration is down today. All right. So if you're having a bad day and your leg is super dead and super slow, don't just say, man, I don't know what it is. My technique's off. Understand that your acceleration is off. And once that affects this basically uh, math equation, this equation or algorithm rather, understand that your power's not going to be there. The same power you had when your leg is fresh at the beginning of fall camp is not going to be the same power you have three or four days in once your leg speeds down or maybe your legs are super dead and you're not being able to lock out in time so you're losing mass. All right, so control what you can control, get the work done that you need to get done, but make sure you understand where your issue is. Become the scientist of your kicking technique. Be able to analyze yourself and make yourself better. Don't go home discouraged. Figure out what the issue is in your math problem and solve it. All right, thank you so much, guys. We're super proud of you. Again, check out our YouTube page. This video, just like a ton of other videos, are going to be on there to help you guys. It's broken down by position, kickers, punters, um, the full episodes of the Between the Uprights. Um, again, great camp in Sulphur. Shout out to all you guys who came out. Uh, Marquise, you've been working your tail off and it showed at this camp. Um, any guy who wants to get some work in or has any other questions, feel free to DM us. We're going to be filming these live feeds every Thursday night at hopefully 8.30 Central. Today we hit it at 9.30 Central. Um, but we're going to be as consistent as possible. Again, we look forward to seeing you. Keep on working, keep on learning, keep on kicking. Thank you, guys.